John Wick Chapter 4 is out in theaters, directed once again by Chad Stahelski, starring once again Keanu Reeves, joined by Lawrence Fishburne, Clancy Brown, Ian McShane, Bill Skarsgård, Donnie Yen, Hiroyuki Sanada, Shamir Anderson, uh, Rina Sawayama, and Lance Reddick, who sadly passed away just days after the movie's premiere. It's the latest entry in the series that became known for absolute top-level stunt work, action sequences, and fighting style labeled Gun Fu, with Keanu Reeves move mowing down hundreds of people in long, clear-as-day sequences set to great electronic music. The story continues with John recuperating after the betrayal at the end of part 3. He quickly goes back to full strength, as expected, but remains on the run. Uh, the high table has given all its resources to the arrogant asshole known as the Marquise, played by Bill Skarsgård, in order to finally bring John Wick down. And the only way to survive seems to be to use the high table's rules against them get back into favor of one of the criminal organizations that, seat, that sits at the table, become the representative and then issue a challenge to the death against the Marquis himself, a duel where either Wick dies or gets to finally walk away free. So I know there are two schools of thought when it comes to the John Wick series. The first one says that the ever-expanding lore uh, of the High Table and the Assassin's Organization and the hotels and the currencies and customs and whatnot is cool, then, and that, that the people in this school of thought are excited about the universe constantly growing bigger and revealing more, more of its secrets. The second school says that no, actually the first John Wick was the best because of, because of the mystery, because things were teased out there in the shadows, we got glimpses of lore, but it was all cool because it was unknown, and giving us answers removes that mystique. Now, I am firmly in the second camp. I think that the first John Wick is the tightest film of them all. It has a very simple plot and a lean structure. It doesn't really lose any any tempo to, to delve into all that lore stuff. I also think that as these films go, they become increasingly ridiculous. The first one was praised for its accuracy regarding handling guns, counting ammo, and similar combat stuff. By comparison, in the fourth part, we have cities full of assassins, no authorities or police to be found anywhere, everyone and their mother wearing bulletproof Kevlar suits which they use to deflect bullets, and John being able to survive stabbings, hits with moving cars, falling down stairs and other types of injuries. So it's definitely gotten way more ridiculous and absurd. But here's the thing, I don't care about that because the action sequences are so fucking crisp that I don't even have the time to, to process the, the nonsense. I don't have time to be bothered by the silly plot or the outrageous physics. You know how sometimes people say, oh, this is the type of movie where you have to turn your brain off to enjoy it. Well, John Wick kind of turns your brain off for you, or although maybe that's not quite true, maybe it it refocuses your brain, it refocuses your attention on what matters, which is cool, perfectly choreographed, well shot and performed action. That's the main dish that we all come here for, everything else is in service of that. And boy, let me tell you, chapter 4 may be the best one yet, when it comes to pure action. There are so many set pieces, I mean, the last hour of the film, which is inspired by the 1979 film The Warriors, is nuts. It's straight up just one set piece after another, each one more impressive than that. It's like the greatest hits of, of what you can do with movie action. Hand-to-hand -hand combat? Check. Shooting? Check. Car chases, motorbike chases, sneaking through a building, one-on-one -on -one duel. I mean, I've seen full action movies that have less set pieces than the last hour of this film. And the film's full runtime is 2 hours 49 minutes, so you better believe there's more than just that one last hour at the end. And for a movie that's this long, it is remarkably well paced. The only time I looked at, a ma at my watch was um, around the end of Act 2, um, somewhere after the, the, the first half of the film. There's a quick breather there, and I thought, whoa, wow, that was good. I bet it's coming to an end now. Nope, another hour still to go. Um, 
Keanu is excellent, is in excellent form as usual. Uh, I know some reviewers have criticized his uh, his line deliver, delivery in this one, claiming that he, he that this is the worst yet, that he speaks like an alien that just learned English uh, five minutes ago. But I think it fits the character and it's <clears throat> it's not that far off from, from the previous movies. And physically, there's just nothing to nitpick. He's giving it his all. Uh, and I think in some ways he, he's becoming or he's become similar to Tom Cruise in a way um, because he they both do things in Hollywood that no other famous actor is willing to to even attempt to to doing uh, then there's the supporting cast the old characters are great as usual it's it's fantastic to see Ian McShane again the new additions I dare say are quite terrific uh, Hiroyuki Sanada has the perfect amount of gravitas and I was giddy seeing him and Donnie Yen together, the mutual respect is palpable. Uh, Donnie Yen himself is absolutely stellar. Uh, he steals most of his scenes and is the best character in the film. And I was worried when he first came on because I was thinking, oh, he's probably just gonna have one action scene and then bam, he's dead. But no, he's, he's in the film a lot. Uh, and also he's incredibly impressive physically and, hence, and he has the presence to match that. And they do something quite interesting with his character to to sort of up the up the stakes then there's bill skarsgård who is absolutely delicious as the psychopathic marquise he's cruel and vicious but he's also cowardly and self-absorbed and over arrogant and i think he plays that part perfectly because you can see in his micro expressions the difference between when he's fully in control and when he's in panic mode i mean it's tiny he doesn't sort of reveal all that but it's there and it's brilliant um, and also his outfits in the film are fucking sublime I mean they just reek of rich snobbery but I'd be lying if they if I said they didn't look good in general the clothes the set design the lighting the music it's all phenomenal and, and sets the perfect stage for the mayhem the cinematography is gorgeous, uh, probably the best yet. And there is a sequence in the film that has John Wick clear out a building full of goons and the camera sort of follows him for a bit and then it goes up into an overhead shot directly from above and, and moves from room to room with him. And that shot continues unbroken for like three or four minutes. My jaw was on the floor with that one. It, it's, it felt like a video game in the best way possible and it's stunning how well they choreographed and, and performed and shot. That particular sequence now again yes there are things in the film that are absolutely cartoonish at this point uh, there is a moment when a character is thrown off uh, thrown down multiple flights of stairs and I was howling with laughter as it happened because it looked almost like something from a Buster Buster Keaton film but then two minutes later the movie starts at the action again and somehow manages to make me take it seriously all over again uh, as a final point, I love the fact that this film doesn't just exist in a vacuum of action movies and Stahelski is very clear in his homages and inspirations. There is that thing with the Warriors which I mentioned, uh, there are bits of other great action films and the ending is a huge homage to Cowboy Bebop which I love. So overall then, it's, it's really a terrific film in my opinion. Uh, and listen, is the story silly? Yes, of course. Are some of the characters almost caricatures of Bond villain-esque characters, figures? Absolutely. Is it in any way realistic or grounded anymore? No sir, but I'll be damned if it isn't entertaining and, and that's what it sets out to do. It wants to be an enjoyable, fun ride that impresses you with its signature death ballet and it does that near perfectly.